Mercedes has concluded yet another troublesome season in which the team struggle to understand what is essentially wrong with their car. But it seems like the Brackley-based squad is going to continue down this road in the upcoming season as well. The statements that Hamilton and Wolf made are not very encouraging. And with the departure of some very high-profile technical staff, we might see Mercedes struggle for quite some time before Hamilton gets a hold of a legitimate chance to fight for the eighth championship. What does the team expect for 2020? And more importantly, is this a massive foundation for huge changes to happen in Mercedes in the foreseeable future? It's safe to say that Hamilton and Mercedes were very happy to get rid of the W14 and you can put Russell into that combination as well, with the younger Brit saying that 2023 was one of the worst seasons in his career. If you consider the fact that he drove for the back mark of Williams for three seasons, it's a huge claim. But more likely than not, Mercedes is not going to wait until 2026 to figure out what is wrong with their car and they will try to bounce back as early as possible. That, however, might be a lot more difficult to accomplish than we might imagine, even though the difference to Red Bull is from a pure aerodynamical perspective. Not to throw shade on this, quite the contrary, but with McLaren and Aston Martin finding beneficial gains from their upgrades in 2023, as Aston Martin started the season on the high horse, but ended up going backwards in the second half, these two squads showed that anything is possible if you have the right crew around you. But does Mercedes have the right crew to build the W15? Hamilton's prediction for 2024 was quite depressing and when elaborating on this in a further note after the Abu Dhabi GP the seven-time world champion went on to say Red Bull won by 17 seconds and they've not touched the car since August or July so you can pretty much guess where they're going to be next year it's not been a great year in general so there's not a lot to take from it the fact that I survived it that's probably it this is not that far from what Hamilton said after the 2022 season ended, where Mercedes continued to push with the zero pod design only to ditch it after the first race of the 2023 season when they were homeschooled by Aston Martin as to where the car should move forward. But for a team like Mercedes being second in the Constructors' Championship and having to defend that place in the last race of the season is definitely not the goal. The championships and the old glory of the team are. So what does Wolf have to say on this entire matter? The Austrian has quite a pessimistic view on where things will move forward from here. And elaborating on this, he went on to say... There is a Mount Everest to climb in order to catch up with Red Bull. Red Bull started the new regulations in 2022 with a massive advantage and they've been able to maintain it. We have a lot of respect for their achievements from the engineering side and the driver. Beating them under the current regulations is against the odds. The engineering side is definitely what Red Bull can count on massively. Even with the departure of Dan Fallows, who was the chief of the aerodynamics department at Red Bull, and Rob Marshall, who's poised to join McLaren next year, the team felt little to no damage in the past season. The fact that they stopped working on the car since July speaks volumes about what the upcoming Challenger is going to look like with Eddie Jordan leaking information from his talk with Adrian Newey, who reportedly told him that the evolution of the RB20 is something that the other teams have no chance to match. But be that as it may, where is Mercedes currently headed with their car? Obviously, they need to be changing quite a lot, and since Hamilton has been quite uncompetitive in the past three races, the Pandora's box has been opened up in terms of where Mercedes is going to navigate the development of the W15. Andrew Shovlin, the trackside engineer of the team, said that they would leave no stone unturned. And talking about this, earlier in the season, he added, we are changing the car quite considerably for next year whether or not we can solve all the issues that we've got on the handling that will depend on a number of projects delivering those projects are underway they are not complete but we've got some good directions to try and improve that the car will be different we made a lot of changes to it but it's very early in the development of the new car to be able to say we've got it sorted one of the key issues that Mercedes is targeting with the new car is consistency, more precisely, 
the lack of it, as the car has been acting a bit strange from track to track, and at certain points, it's been acting a bit weird on the same track, but in different sectors. The team's inability to fix this problem for two years straight, although it can be attributed hugely to the fact that they've chased the wrong concept, is not something they can be proud of, and that's something they are poised to change for the upcoming season. But the motivation of the drivers will also play a key role here, because this has been the most dominant season that a team has displayed in the history of the sport, beating even the 1952 season of Alberto Ascari and the 2016 season of Mercedes, which in their defence were seasons with a lot fewer venues to participate in in the first place. Regardless, Verstappen and Perez left only one venue that was won by another driver other than them, Signs in Singapore, and the fact that Verstappen had 19 of those 21 wins at Red Bull speaks volumes about where the team is currently standing. This is something that is worrying the F1 experts and whether or not we are going to have to wait for 2026 in order to see some larger shakeups on the grid. Elaborating on this, Damon Hill has thrown some shade towards Mercedes when it comes to them fixing the issues that have damned the performance of the W14. More precisely, Hill has caught Hamilton's statement after the Abu Dhabi race when it comes to whether or not Mercedes will have a proper shot to fight for the championship or maybe even race wins in 2024. As Hill said, it's a long, hard year and he'll bounce back from that. But the worrying thing was when Rachel asked him, have you got any hope about what was coming? He was not exactly effervescent about it. When talking about the W15, Hill's response was much more optimistically orientated as he went on to elaborate, I think on reflection, I'm sure that they'll come back. They've got to have learned something from the last two seasons and they've got to learn something from this year that will mean they've got some ability to take a change in direction. He motivated quite a lot of change in that team when they were persisting with their original car and he's gotten them to change and think differently. So I'm sure that the new car will have no resemblance to the current one. Knowing that you are in the wrong is definitely the right step to move forward if you want to come back, but unlike McLaren, Mercedes doesn't really know where they messed up. At least that was the narrative for the majority of this year. At one point, Wolf even said that if they were to strip down the car to the last nut and bolt, they would find a mechanical failure in there as well. So maybe it's not that much to the aero as it is to the entire concept of the car, one that the team has been chasing in the wrong direction throughout this entire newly regulated era. Naomi Schiff, the Sky F1 pundit, is also worried about Wolf's comments regarding the future of the team, and when she asked him about whether the team was building on starting from a completely new base, Wolf monotonously said that the team has good things in the pipeline, an answer we've been hearing for quite some time now. Furthermore, she said, look, Lewis has said on multiple occasions that's where he wants to leave his legacy. So I think for now there's enough hope left within the team, the spirit, even with Toto saying down the barrel of our cameras that he has faith that they can turn the situation around. Of course, they didn't this year. Quite clearly, the mood is still quite low. But I found what was interesting there about what Lewis said, that it's slightly disappointing to see that Red Bull is still winning by 17 seconds. With this in mind, do you think that Mercedes has a legitimate chance to fight for race wins in 2024, or will they be overhauled by their customer companies, Aston Martin and McLaren? Let us know what you think in the comments below.